Mick Shrek and Ann Chamberlain. I don't know. It just, it was a gift I got. So I was very, very fortunate. Mick always used to say, that's, that's a crazy idea, but don't stop coming up with crazy ideas. And Ann always used to just say, keep going back to the sauna because... <laughs> <laughs> they won't let me in because <laughs> the joke is I'd go out and I'd, I'd find a bone and bring it back and she'd determine whether it was edible or not <laughs> my two would be John Torrance because I wouldn't be here without John Torrance and uh, and the longer that I've gotten to know John and the better I've gotten to know John the more I, I appreciate his skill set John is an absolute visionary he just sees things that most people don't see and that turned on the possibility switch for me that um, I still admire in John to this day. It's, it, it's, it's phenomenal. John's 87 years old today, and he's still thinking about real estate. And he still talks about Vancouver, British Columbia, and, and how we should be more like Canada and that city, what they're doing. And so John definitely. The other guy is, uh, is Brent Nicholson. So I ran for Mick Shrek, who Bob spoke of. But yet I was day to day with Brent. I wasn't day to day with Mick. And Brent was the runner whose position I took from. So Brent was a first year guy when I was a runner. And Brent really took me by the hand and said, this is how we do things to get successful. I I admire what Brent does to this day. I would also say John Black. I was very fortunate. John Black sat next to me here and sat next to me here. Ann was extremely organized, and John was organized too, but I would listen to things he would say, and I'd look at him and say, John, that's that's just not right. You know, he'd get his numbers all confused. And he'd look at me and he goes, don't worry about it. He goes, he just had a way with people that was so um, comforting. But, but that's the other aspect to CV that was so important, I felt is that we weren't in a private office environment. We under, we were in a cubicle environment. You couldn't be seen. They were only this high. This high. And so if anybody stood up, the entire office could see them. We were sitting down, you could see each other. And yeah, and what that would promote is you could overhear uh, all the conversations, whether they were private or otherwise. Everybody was involved with everything that was going on and it created this wonderful environment that I've got to create this because I, I'm part of this machine. And, it, and, and you couldn't sit there and be idle. It was impossible to be idle. And even if no one's on the other line, you got to pick up the phone and pretend like you were yeah. talking to somebody because everyone expected you to be busy. So it was it was genius on their part to design. And I don't know if that still exists today. It, it's, it's gone the wrong way. No, the or big, the cubes have gotten higher. Or the whatever. biggest change is you used to go into the, our brokerage offices, not probably every business in town, and you'd hear noise. I mean, it was, it was, there was action going on. It was. You go in now and it's hard to make noise when you're typing. You walk into the casino, you want to hear noise. You want to see everything going on. You don't want to walk into the casino and, and, and look at private rooms. Where, oh, the crap table's over there. and The blackjack tables are over there, but I can't see anything. So we were all in the Bellevue office, which was one of the most productive offices that CB had actually in the country. And talk about noise. I sat next to one of the noisiest brokers, Jeff Scanlon, and he'd start telling a story in the morning and he, he'd wind up and wind up. Sometimes I'd end up with my phone under my desk so I could make <laughs> business phone calls because he was so loud. I think that whole team, we all had an influence on one another. Um, as it turns out, I was also a runner for Mick Shrek, so of course, he had a big influence on my career, but also the interesting relationship that Bob and I had was one that endured and still to this day. I mean, as he said, he'd go into the sauna where I couldn't go and he'd come back with four ideas and I'd go, I don't know about that one. That is a great idea. We're going to go with that. Let's And let's try the second one too. And that's what made the team work so well is because we respected one another so much and we had very different skill sets too. Hats off to the entire Bellevue office where we all interacted, we all did different things. By the way, thank you, Bob. Yeah, thank you. To 
expand on that just a little bit. Torrance deserves it, all the credit. He created the environment. You're now, right. God only knows how he did it, but he doesn't know. He doesn't know. <laughs> he just he let the ponies run. That's, what, that's what he did. Yeah. He wasn't a, he wasn't the architect. He was the visionary. Intuitively knew he just did. which people would fit into the this Bellevue office organization that he had and which ones were likely to be successful. Not through as the, even the complicated process we talked about, but just intuitively he knew which people would be successful. He, John was in love with hotels. Oh God. Just in love with hotels. <laughs> And we weren't in the hotel business. But so we went and hired this guy. And his name was Gary Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> and all of a sudden, he showed, this guy shows up one day to start work. And who's this guy? Well, I, John hired me. Gary Maybe. I'm selling hotels. So Gary joins the team. And he doesn't sell a single hotel. No. He, the poor guy. And he lived in Clay Allen. <laughs> He was driving and he back, drove it and every forth, day. back and forth after nights out, <laughs> way too late. And he finally had this one hotel, one resort he was selling in Phoenix, and it was just about ready to close. And lo and behold, Saddam Hussein invades Kuwait. And the, this deal's going to close tomorrow. And Gary's going to make $350,000. Unfortunately, the money was coming out of Kuwait. <laughs> and I remember Gary City. These, these words are going to kill me. <laughs> I'll never forget that. Poor Gary. Poor Gary. Poor Gary. <laughs>